Hello everyone. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about another section within your settings on your iPhone and explaining what each of those things does. So again, to start this process, you'd go into your settings app, scroll down a little bit from the top and click on cellular, which is one option from the top in our case. Uh, I've scrolled down a little bit already. So if you were to click on where it says cellular, it would open up this other uh, page. And as you can see, there's lots of different things to toggle on and off app wise and, um, you know, option wise as well. But um, yeah, so I'm going to explain what each of these things does. So first of all, at the very top where it says cellular data, if I were to click where that little green toggle is, it would turn off my cellular data entirely. There may be various reasons why I would want to do this or you would want to do this, but that is how you turn off your cellular data. Now, a shortcut to do this without having to go all the way into your settings would be to swipe down from the top right on an iPhone 11 and touch that green circle, which would turn it gray, and that means that your cellular data is off. Now, if you have an older iPhone, this menu is accessed by swiping up from the bottom but on the iPhone 11, and I believe some the iPhone 10 and 10s as well, maybe um, it's accessed from the top right. Um, and again, you would just touch that green circle. Now, from this screen here, um, the second thing down is cellular data options. So if you click on that, it takes you to another menu here. Uh, the top thing saying enable LTE, which is turned on. LTE, uh, you probably heard of it as 4G LTE, is, well, I guess now there's tech technically 5G in some places, but it was the fourth generation, just past the fourth generation, the next 4G LTE uh, is the generation of cellular technology. So you've probably maybe heard of 2G, which was kind of older technology like flip phones and that kind of thing way back in the day. Then it went to 3G, and then it went to 3, um, um, then it went to f uh, 4G, and then 4G LTE, which is just a faster version of 4G, and then now we're on 5G. Well, if you have this turned off, then your phone will only work with 4G and 3G, I mean, f sorry, 4G, yeah, and 3G, um, and sometimes you'll even see that E symbol at the top, which is just a slower generation of cellular service. But you really want to have this toggled on pretty much at all times because that's going to allow you the fastest connection possible. Underneath that, it says data roaming. Data roaming basically just means when you're out of the country or in an area maybe with no coverage from you know a major provider. I, I, I really actually think it would probably just be out of the country at at this point in time, but um, it allows your phone to automatically connect to whatever network you're at. So for instance, we went to Canada a while back and I had data roaming turned on. And when we crossed into Canada at the top of my sc screen, instead of it saying AT&T, it said like Rogers or some other company. Um, that's because my phone was able to roam and pick that up. Now with a lot of carriers in Canada and Mexico, it doesn't cost anything extra to roam. Uh, in some countries it would, but that's how you know you're roaming a lot of times is the name of your company that normally would be at t Verizon, whatever, will switch over to that local company. And that allows you to stay connected the whole time you're international if you so choose. Underneath uh, that, it says low data mode. And it's exactly what it describes underneath. It helps reduce Wi-Fi and cellular data usage. Uh, when it's turned on, automatic updates, background tasks such as photo syncing or pause. So very self-explanatory message there on that. Now, if you go back to cellular, the option below that is personal hotspot. So what is personal hotspot? Well, pers and again, uh, I got to this menu by just touching personal hotspot. Personal, personal hotspot is basically using your phone as a way for another device to connect to the internet and to, um, uh, yeah, uh, in some instances, um, use cellular technology. So let's say you have a laptop and you are at a cabin in the woods and you have your phone 
with you, but let's say that the cabin has horrible Wi-Fi, or let's just say it doesn't have Wi-Fi at all, you, but let's say you have good cell signal where you're at. You can turn on personal hotspot, and then when you search for Wi-Fi networks on your laptop at the cabin, it will say the name of your iPhone. Let's say it, it's iPhone in this case, and it'll come up on the laptops and say iPhone as the name of the network. And you'll click that, and you'll enter in here where it says Wi-Fi password. In my case, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You would enter that as the password. And then now your laptop is using your phone to connect to the network um, cellularly. Um, and it's kind of like Wi-Fi. Uh, basically, it is Wi-Fi. So that is a very um, good feature to have. Now, most cell providers give a limited amount of hotspot per month. I think in my case, I get 10 gigabytes per line per month. Uh, but this is a very helpful thing, and uh, allowing others to join, you have to toggle that, um, as you see on the screen, to be able to use your phone as a hotspot and for other devices to be able to see you. You can also change this Wi-Fi password by going in here, clicking the X, and typing a new password and hitting Done, uh, if you so choose. Now, underneath this is another great feature on a lot of phones, which is Wi-Fi calling. If you go into this and you toggle this on, Wi-Fi calling would be turned on on your phone. Now, what is Wi-Fi calling? Well, it's the exact opposite problem that I just uh, gave as an example. It would be a situation maybe where you either don't want to use cellular data to make a call or you are in a spot, let's say you're in a cabin that has horrible cell reception This in this example, but it has great Wi-Fi. Well, you can toggle this feature on, and instead of your call being made over cellular data, it'll be made over Wi-Fi, just like Skype or WhatsApp or uh, those kind of services do. And if you do that, um, that is um, you know, a great way to still remain connected if you're in an isolated place, but you have good internet speed. Now, do keep in mind there is this warning message under this, which has to do with your carrier's emergency settings, that kind of thing. A lot of times when you turn on Wi-Fi calling, it'll prompt you to enter in your address, um, your main address. And the reason for that is cellular technology is used to locate you in an emergency oftentimes. If your call gets disconnected or uh, that's sometimes a method that they use. So if your Wi-Fi calling is on and your data is if your call is going through that and you make an emergency call, um, they can't use that information to track you. Um, not 100% sure on the reasons why for that, but the tower, I guess, pinging with the phone um, helps them to determine your location. So just keep that in mind that if you have that on and let's say you put in your home address but you're somewhere else and you made an emergency call and that was you were hung up or something happened and they needed to find you, they might send people to your house instead of where you're really at. So that is a downside to that. Now, if you go back underneath Wi-Fi calling, there's this thing that says carrier services. If you click on this, uh, this is a list of numbers that you can call for different things related to your cell phone plan. So if you wanted to check your bill balance, you can call asterisk 225 pound and it will give that information um, over the phone might send you a text depending on your carrier uh, or view by minutes same thing so these are just uh, shortcuts um, for where it says at t my account i'm not sure if other carriers have this or not but in my case if you click on this it will take you to a link to log into your at t account to view even more details on your service through AT&T or whatever. Underneath this is your SIM pin, and this basically locks your SIM card if this is turned on. Sometimes in order to do certain features on your phone, it's just an extra step of security um, on um, your SIM card. Um, I remember as a consultant at times back in the store, having to get this number or reset this number in order to help fix or work on things with a customer's phone. Um, I would recommend leaving this off, but it is something that you can use um, if you need to 
uh, for whatever reason. And to do that, you would um, have to enter your existing pin and then you can change what the SIM pin actually is. Uh, but I would say to leave that, that pin off. Um, add cellular plan is a unique feature that if you click on that and let's say you had pre-purchased a card that had minute uh, minutes or whatever on it and it had a QR code or some type of barcode, um, you can scan that and it will um, add get you kind of going on the process of adding cellular to your or more minutes or whatever it may be to your plan um, or to your phone, I guess, rather, uh, which is a, a unique feature. Underneath this, there's this cellular data section, which uh, gives current period, current period roaming, uninstalled apps, and then a list of a lot of your different apps here. So this is a way to turn off individual apps for using cellular data, whether it be in the background or just in use in general. So if you wanted to turn off some of these apps, you could uh, and leave others on. This current period and current period roaming if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see this thing that says reset statistics. So I haven't reset my statistics in a very long time. But if you wanted to reset it and let's say keep an eye on this, all of this, uh, how much data you're you cellular data you're using, etc. in a certain period of time, a week, a month, whatever, you just reset your statistics and it'll give you the statistics statistics for just that period. It also shows uninstalled apps and how much data they use, even if they're not on your phone. You know, maybe apps you've had in the past, but don't now. Um, and then under system services, it'll break down even further what kind of um, information is being um, uh, using data within that. Same with Hotspot as well. Um, but all of these apps can be toggled on or off. Now, at the bottom, there's a couple other things. One is Wi-Fi Assist. I definitely recommend keeping this on. Um, this is on so that when your Wi-Fi is not very strong, it will automatically use cellular data for tasks. Uh, in the past, there wasn't this feature on iPhone, and when you would try to do something on Wi-Fi, if your Wi-Fi cut off or wasn't very reliable and you had this turned... Uh, before this feature existed or you had this turned off, um, then it would just spin forever and not work. Um, and so this allows you to use Wi-Fi when it's strong and working. When it's not, you don't have to go in and always turn it on and off and on and off. It'll automatically kick over to cellular. I have an unlimited plan, so it doesn't really bother me for it to do this. Now, if you have a very limited data plan, you may not want this to be on, but in most cases you would. Underneath this is just the um, iCloud Drive. And what the iCloud Drive does is that when you're doing some of these things, when it, what it's talking about here, uh, when you're not connected to Wi-Fi, you use cellular network to transfer documents and data. So again, you know, transferring large files and information, um, you may not want it to do that when you're not on Wi-Fi if you don't have unlimited data, but if you do, then who cares, leave it on. Um, and then the last thing we'll talk about, other than we already talked about the reset statistics, which it gives the last reset underneath, but the is your call time. Uh, that would be the current period, which I don't think I've reset since, uh, since I had my first iPhone, to be honest, uh, which is why the current period and the lifetime are the same for call time. But this gives your total call log time, uh, and it also gives the, the time since your last reset as well under current period. Um, so that's what that is. So yeah, that's uh, everything within the cellular section of your iPhone in the settings. And I uh, hope that helps with some explanations. Thank you.